So you want to buy a bike helmet, but you don't know what to get. This one costs £10 and this one costs £230. This one has built-in lights and this one has a visor. But what's the difference? Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm going to explain why and what features are worth paying for so that you are up to speed and can keep safe. Bike helmets work by helping to dissipate the force of an impact when you crash. They have a polystyrene construction with a hard outer shell and designed to compress to act as a shock absorber. However, once damaged, the helmet will need replacing immediately as it will no longer be effective. So what are the different styles of helmets and how do they differ? First up, a type of helmet we're most likely to have seen before, a road cycling helmet. These are also commonly used for gravel riding or some light off-road mountain bike style riding. They're typically fairly lightweight, offer good ventilation, and in some cases designed with aerodynamics in mind. Their shape is non-restrictive in terms of your movement or field of view, and they sit above the ears and not particularly low on the rear of your head. Road helmets tend to do a good job of covering all bases and can be seen as a bit of a do-it-all solution. Aero helmets next, and these are those weird looking things that you see professional and amateur cyclists wearing when competing against the clock in a time trial. They're also commonplace in the velodrome, and while they serve the purpose of offering head protection, they're also very focused on reducing the aerodynamic drag of a rider's head. This extended rear section smooths the airflow from the head to a rider's back. Most of them will have an integrated visor to keep the wind out of your eyes, but also to improve airflow too. These tend to be held in place using small magnets. Unfortunately, striving for optimal aerodynamics means a sacrifice in ventilation, and some aero helmets will have no vents whatsoever, meaning a very sweaty head. Oh, and this one weighs 450 grams. Mountain bike helmets next, and whilst earlier I said some road helmets are suitable for light off-road, if you're taking mountain biking seriously or doing anything a bit more extreme, then a dedicated mountain bike helmet will offer some different features and some added protection. The biggest difference here is the sections to protect almost all of your head. We've got a front chin guard, which is completely removable, should your riding be a little bit less extreme, but it's a cool feature. They tend to be well ventilated to account for slower riding speeds and have a more substantial feeling to them. This one weighs 975 grams. Most mountain bike helmets will have a peak fitted to the front of them. Not sure exactly why, it's just a mountain bike thing and they're quite often used with a set of goggles. But what if you're not planning on getting kitted up in Lycra and looking like you're ready to take on the Tour de France? Well, a commuter or more casual style helmet could be the way to go. These offer slightly less ventilation than a road helmet as it's likely you won't be working quite so hard. This one has vents which can open and close. How cool is that? A visor which retracts away and a super fancy pants magnetic closure system. Many will offer a number of additional visibility or safety features built in, such as lights or reflective panels. They're often designed with some additional padding and offer more protection to the rear of your head. There are even some commuter style helmets which can fold up to take up less space in your bag once you've arrived at your destination. To keep you safer still, there is other tech used in helmet design, such as slip planes, and these allow part of the construction of the helmet to stay fixed in place, but allow the outer part of the helmet to rotate slightly to help dissipate even more of that energy from an impact. The most common type of this tech is called MIPS, which stands for Multi-Directional Impact Protection. There have also been brands experimenting with integrated sensors that can help detect a significant impact and will in fact send an alert to an emergency contact or maybe even call an ambulance. All pretty clever stuff, eh? 
But if you're fairly new to cycling, you might be wondering, why would I choose this £230 helmet over the £10 bargain bucket version? Well, let me explain a few areas where they differ. Firstly, the weight. Now the Giro is 270 grams compared to the 250 grams for this helmet. While you might be surprised by this, it's due to the additional safety and tech that's built into the helmets. Here we've got a dual layer construction with varying density foam and that MIPS system built in. Whereas over here, we don't have any of that tech and it's a much more basic design. In terms of ventilation, both of these helmets are vented to keep your head cool. This one has strategically placed vents and has been designed and tested in a wind tunnel for the optimal balance of cooling and aerodynamics. Whereas I can't exactly say the same for this helmet here. Not crucial if you're doing short, easy rides, but in warmer climates and when you're starting to work harder, you'll want all of the additional cooling that you can get. Generally, the more money you spend on a helmet will result in more tech and features built in. In this helmet, we've got antibacterial treatments for the padding inside and an adjustment system that offers fine control and a secure fit. Whereas over here, well, we've got no special antibacterial treatment and a less secure and precise adjustment mechanism. Being a piece of safety equipment, the level of protection and quality should come at the top of your priority list. Both of these helmets meet the regulation EN1078, which is great news. The difference here is that one has additional tech to try and offer an additional level of protection. But what about those safety ratings? Because although it's cool to look cool, it's no good if your helmet just isn't up to the job. And throughout the world, there are a number of different safety standards helmets are required to meet. This will depend on different countries, rules and regulations for where you live, but also for the type of cycling it's designed for. Buying from a reputable brand, from a reputable store, and considering the type of cycling you do, should mean that you have nothing to worry about. There are a whole load of impact tests and procedures to meet these safety standards, most of which Ollie has seen firsthand. And to be honest, these tests are pretty brutal and in most cases, completely destructive. So now that we know all of that, how do you actually go around getting a helmet to fit correctly? Well, the first step is to choose the correct size. You need to measure your head circumference and then helmets will come in a range of sizes that they're suitable for. First step is to place the helmet onto your head and you need to get the front to sit about midway on your forehead. Tighten the rear retention system to hold it in place. Not so tight that you get a headache, but so that it doesn't wobble about too much. Don't be that person who rides along with a wonky helmet. The chin strap is what will stop the helmet from flying off in the event of a crash. You need to make sure it's tight enough to be secure, but not so tight as to restrict the movement of your head or your chin. If adjustable, these sections by your ear need to sit just below your earlobes and not over the top. Simple and safe. Take your time and you'll hopefully never need to adjust it again. Hope you enjoyed this video and have learned something new along the way. And if you'd like to see more bike tech videos such as this, well, please subscribe to GCN Tech. And why not let me know in the comments section down below what style of helmet you choose to use. See ya.